Hello, anatomy students. In this podcast, we're going to be reviewing the different types of tissues. We've already learned that cells are arranged in groups called tissues. Tissues are groups of similar, specialized cells that work together to perform specific functions in an organ. Tissue cells are usually connected to each other or anchored to other cellular structures in specific ways. These cell-to-cell -cell connections are called cell junctions. Tissues are also often surrounded by some type of extracellular material, giving the tissue a unique composition, making them soft and gelatinous, too hard and rigid. Tissues vary considerably in the way the cells are organized, the shapes of the cells, the types of cells within the tissue, and the kinds of protein fibers that help hold the tissue together. The specialized branch of biology that studies tissues is called histology. The prefix histo refers to tissues. Specific changes to tissues are indicative of disease, and it is up to a pathologist to help physicians with their diagnosis based upon these changes. There are four basic types of tissues in the human body. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. These types of tissues are organized based upon their structural and functional differences. Epithelial tissue is a covering and lining tissue that is found throughout the body in every organ system. It covers the surface of the body. It is a major part of the skin, as well as serves as a cover to organs. It also lines hollow organs, like the stomach, intestines, and blood vessels. It's also found within cavities, lining the pericardial cavity of the heart and pleural cavity of the lungs, for example, as well as ducts. In addition, because it is often secretory, epithelial tissue also makes up the structure of the body's glands. Epithelial tissue promotes interaction between the external environment and the internal environment of the body. These tissues are critically important to physiology because chemical substances must pass through them before they enter into the blood. Connective tissue is a protective tissue that provides support and structure to the body's tissues and organs. Like epithelial tissue, it is also widely distributed throughout the body. Connective tissue contains cells called fibroblasts. The prefix blast means to build, and these cells secrete protein fibers and other extracellular materials that help hold together and interconnect the various parts of organs. Connective tissue also contains an extracellular material called ground substance.
This is a gel-like material that surrounds the connective tissue cells and fibers. It varies in its consistency based upon the tissue it's found in, from a liquid to a semi-solid gelatin-like substance to a hard, rigid material. Connective tissue also stores energy in the form of fat. And through the blood is the home of the immune system, which defends the body against pathogens, organisms like bacteria and parasites that cause disease. Muscular tissue is made of cells that are adapted to contract or shorten in length. This contraction allows work to be done, such as moving the bones of the skeleton, pumping blood in and out of the heart, and moving food and fluids through the digestive system. And finally, nervous tissue is made up of neurons, or as they're commonly called, nerve cells. These are found in the brain, spinal cord, and the various peripheral nerves of the body. Nervous tissue is able to detect changes to the internal and external environments of the body. These changes are called stimuli. Upon detection of a change, nervous tissue is able to communicate this change to other cells by producing a nerve impulse which we also call an action potential. This nerve impulse is conducted from nerve cell to nerve cell, or from nerve cells to muscles or to glands. Each impulse is an electrical signal that triggers a specific cellular response. Examples of responses are when muscle fibers contract or when a gland secretes a hormone. We're going to study the major types of tissues and specific examples of each tissue in this chapter. A big focus of our attention will be differences in tissues' individual structures and functions.